What if I were to tell you that we have been lied to for the last 10 years? Because when it comes to NBA conspiracies and what ifs, one has always bothered me more than any other. I've taken a deep dive into several theories, ranging from what if the 1985 draft was rigged, to what if Michael Jordan is Jimmy Butler's father. But I have never touched one theory because I simply do not believe it is true. When it comes to Chris Paul, when it comes to the what if the NBA did not veto the Chris Paul trade, I've always thought there was something weird here. It's been uh, two months now since you vetoed the Chris Paul to the Lakers trade. Was it the right thing to do? Should I answer? I didn't veto anything. There's no superstar that gets traded in this league unless the owner says, go ahead with it. Okay, I have no further questions for the witness. This conspiracy goes that in 2011, after Woj reported that Chris Paul was going to be traded to the Los Angeles Lakers, David Stern gave into the pressure of every other NBA owner and vetoed the trade, costing us prime years of Chris Paul. Paul and Kobe. Chris Paul has continued to talk about this possibility. However, before he passed away, David Stern called the whole thing a lie. David Stern says that he saved the New Orleans Pelicans from making one of the worst trades of all time. A trade that potentially could have cost them their franchise. So what's up guys, Mike here, and yes, back in 2011, the city of New Orleans was in danger of losing their NBA franchise. You can go back to the headlines, they were in the process of selling their team, and there were of course some buyers who wanted to move that team to other locations. The seller, George Shin, would actually say he sold the Hornets for around $50 million less than he could have because he wanted the team to stay in New Orleans. Now, in order for that to happen, though, the NBA needed an attractive team to sell. It is here where David Stern claims that the Hornets' general manager went behind his back and wildly traded Chris Paul without anyone's permission but his own. Stern told Sports Illustrated, I didn't do a great job of explaining it at the time. There was a trade that New Orleans GM Dell Demps wanted us to approve, and I said, heck no. But he told Rockets GM Daryl Morey and then Lakers GM Mitch Kupchak he had the authority to do it, and he didn't. I said, no, we just settled a lockout, and you want me to approve a basketball trade? Now, Sturden's statement about the lockout must ring true to some extent, as this NBA lockout did last from July 1st, 2010 to December 8th, 2011. When was the Chris Paul to the Lakers trade announced? December 8th, 2011. Let's go back to David Stern's own words here, where he said, Demps had agreed to trade Paul to the Lakers for Kevin Martin and Luis Scola or something. And I said, we can do better than that. And the next trade was to the Clippers for Eric Gordon and Alfruk Iaminu and what we thought was a really great draft pick, the 10th pick, which turned out to be Austin Rivers. Low-key shots fired. At least those three and someone else, center Chris Kamen. But Dell Demps is a lousy general manager and none of those players are currently with the team anymore. And he may lose Anthony Davis. Quite a statement from the old commission. But before we continue, guys, I am very excited to thank SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video because, yet again, SeatGeek is hooking us up. Now, as we all know, it is not basketball season, but during the offseason, I do love to watch the New York Yankees because if you did not know, my great-grandfather was a New York Yankee, and so I always have to go and support my own family. Yankees are my family. I said it. SeatGeek also has all of your favorite artists, such as Drake, who is still on tour right now. I still haven't gone. I'm regret- I think I have to go. You should go to any single live event you want because again, SeatGeek is hooking us up. If you use my promo code 2KMike, you are going to get $20 off your first order. That is $20 off your first purchase using promo code 2KMike. Thank you again to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video and for hooking us up. And now let's get back into that video. And you may doubt Stern. However, what are we doubting? Because he is holding holding strong to the fact that he wanted to trade for a younger team. And the Hornets, soon to be Pelicans, did get the number one draft pick, which ended up becoming Anthony Davis, a franchise player to build around only, David Stern's words, not mine, lousy general manager, Del Demps, somehow watched as Anthony Davis made three first team all NBA appearances in New Orleans while only making the playoffs twice. I also want to point out that if Stern was lying, would he really stand by the players he traded for this much. Eric Gordon, Aminu, and Austin Rivers all had pretty good careers in the NBA, but none of them were the players they were supposed to become. Especially Eric Gordon. He was seen as potentially the second best young shooting guard in the entire NBA behind Dwayne Wade. Sounds unbelievable now, but a third year Eric Gordon did average 22.4 points per game. Bef 
before he lost a step due to a ton of injuries. However, this is where the conspiracy enters in. As Cavs general manager Dan Gilbert did write David Stern a letter that somehow leaked, saying, I cannot remember ever seeing a trade where a team got by far the best player in the trade and saved over $40 million in the process. That's simple. We don't need to read any more of this letter. That is everything we need to know. What exactly was this horrible trade? It was Chris Paul, a young superstar with still a Hall of Fame career ahead of him, to the Lakers for Pau Gasol, who still had two All-Star years left in him with the Bulls, for Lamar Odom, who would be out of the NBA within two seasons, and Luis Scola and Kevin Martin. The real initial reaction from this trade, the NBA community knows that everyone agreed the Lakers had done it again, that they had fleeced the New Orleans Hornets. Nobody believed they were getting equal value for the best young point guard in the league. Watch how happy Blake and DeAndre Jordan are to find out that the Clippers traded for Chris Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? That'd be a lot, city. <laughs> oh my god. Who did they give up again? We don't care! Everyone agreed the Lakers duped New Orleans. However, it was just the sheer audacity of the commissioner vetoing a trade like this was fantasy football that made everyone absolutely furious. The thing is, though, what everyone immediately swept under the rug right away was that the NBA owned New Orleans. I don't even know how you can call this a veto still. If the NBA owns the franchise, is it not them just changing their mind? I mean, again, not the coolest, maybe not the most ethical. We can agree there. And I don't want to be a snitch, so I'm not going to point fingers at anyone else in the NBA who has done this. But people have changed their minds in the past. It's also hard to get past the fact that David Stern directly called out Dell Demps and called him a lousy GM. And Dell Demps declined an interview with the LA Times and refused to respond. That's all I'm saying. No implication. But why is he not responding? I do definitely understand the frustration of the players. I mean, the fact that they had to go back to the same team that had just traded them. That's just always messed up. If Demps was not supposed to do this though, and Stern was undoing his actions, well, he's the commissioner of the NBA, and to be honest, no one is still questioning the actual trade that took place. People are just questioning whether or not he had the authority to do it. The biggest statement made by an NBA executive at the time was, we were all told by the league Chris Paul was a tradable player, and now they're saying that Dell doesn't have the authority to make the trade? Now they're saying that Dell is an idiot, and he can't do his job. F this whole thing. David's drunk on power, and he doesn't give a f about the players and he doesn't give a f about the hundreds of hours the teams put in to make that deal. Again, quite a statement. But what I'm hearing is a lot of frustration from someone who's not getting what they want, which would be probably someone on the Lakers or the Rockets. They were getting pow. But yet again, no one in New Orleans was feeling bad that this trade was not happening. Then add in the fact that New Orleans was being sold and that the owners wanted to keep the city in New Orleans. Yes, it was definitely in the NBA's best interest in mind financially to make the franchise as financially attractive active as possible, but as we also heard from New Orleans' own owner, it was in his interest to line up a buyer who stayed in New Orleans, and that's what ended up happening. New Orleans kept their basketball franchise, and the very next year, instead of being an eight seed or something like that, they drafted Anthony Davis, who led their team as a star for almost the rest of the decade. Again, proving that Dell Demps, in David Stern's words, was lousy GM. In my words, yeah, lousy, but with respect. And so while ultimately, while Chris Paul to the Lakers would have been amazing, I am a big Kobe fan. Don't come at me, Lakers fans, please. David Stern wildly calling out Dell Demps with no response, combined with the logical fact that this trade just made a whole lot more sense. I mean, if Eric Gordon doesn't go from averaging over 22 points per game in his third season to getting completely injured and then being kind of a bust from there, well, then this David Stern trade may have actually been looked at as one of the best trades of all time. Instead, though, in a league where I've talked about a lot of conspiracies this is one where i just do not fully agree so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed today's video if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications and can we get some extra love to offset the potential laker hate here i can feel it coming if you're already subscribed thank you so much for supporting you're awesome we all know it and as always have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think, and again, have an awesome day.